If you're trying to get a deep technical job in IT security, then I think I can help you. If you're trying to do penetration testing, reverse engineering, malware analysis, exploit development, red teaming, you're trying to do one of those kind of jobs and you need help getting into that kind of career, then what we're doing now at InfoSec Addicts, I think I can help you get there. This is working. Quick overview of how it works. You'll work with me. We'll do like a skills inventory to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. Once we know what your strengths and weaknesses are, we'll say, okay, well, what kind of job are you looking for? Penetration tester, malware analysis, reverse engineering. Then after that, we'll set up a custom training program and a schedule. We'll get that figured out. We'll get that worked out. And then what are the goals? So you know, what are the measurables? How do we know that you're hitting your goals and are you on target? We'll be adjusting your, your training program if necessary. And then we'll just make sure that you get the job that you're looking for or the skill set that you're looking for or pass the certification that you're looking to pass, whatever that goal is in terms of cybersecurity. I'm going to do my absolute best to help you. Anybody who's been a mentee with me for at least a few months has moved into the kind of job that they wanted career-wise. I'm working with just you. So you'll be on the phone with me and we'll be helping you get to where you want to go. Okay, so let's say, for example, that you have already done the statement of work. The customer has signed the statement of work and agreed to do the engagement, okay? So you've got a signed statement of work. You've got a signed non-disclosure agreement. Customer is ready to rock and roll. We do the NDA as soon as we talk to the customer. And then after signing the NDA, now the customer can tell you about their environment. Hey, I've got 500 servers. Hey, I've got whatever it is that I have, 2,000 machines. I really want you to test whatever. Then you come up with this scoping document, right? And that's the SOW that I sent you. You open it up and you tailor the SOW to fit the customer's needs. You shoot the SOW over. Now we get the SOW signed. The customer approves the SOW and the SOW has the target network information in it. One of the fallacies is like when you do your CEH, they make it sound like you can do this thing called a black box penetration test. And I need to let you know that in the real world, we do not do black box penetration tests. A portion of the penetration test may be black box, where we try to prove to the customer what we can discover externally. But under no circumstances does any customer allow you to blindly discover his network and launch attacks against it without, in the beginning, approving what IPs, what systems. You, you just, no customer lets you do that, right? Well, yeah, because it would make them more vulnerable if they did do it. Not only does it make them more, more vulnerable, you know, when you're doing penetration tests, oftentimes they have to do maintenance windows. They have to coordinate stuff with different teams. They may have to let the security operations center know. No one is going to let you just blindly attack stuff. You, you know what I mean? Now, now again, the customer may ask for a portion of the engagement to be black box so that they can see what can an attacker with zero knowledge learn about the network. So we're not saying that there aren't portions that are black box, but once you actually start attacking, the customer is given notice that we're about to start launching attacks against against this IP range. Okay? Is the customer going to just let you run Nessus scans without them approving which host you run them against? Nope. No. They're not going to. So step one is initial contact. Step two is scoping. With scoping, what we're doing with scoping, for networks, I usually scope about 100 hosts per hour, right? This is my usual rule of thumb, okay? So what do I mean by that? If the customer tells me that he's got uh, 10,000 endpoints, 
then I need to take off two, right? Take off two zeros. That's going to be about a hundred hours for me, right? Now that's just for scanning. That's not even attacking. So if a customer tells me he's got 10,000 endpoints that he wants me to test, I'm immediate like, well, 40 man hours is one man week. So I'm already at two weeks. Are you, are you starting to see why we do it this way? I know you muted yourself. Sorry. Yes, I see exactly that. I'm sorry. I have uh, people talking in the background. I didn't want to disturb you. No, no, no problem. I'm just making sure we're all on the same page. Because I know for where you want to go, this is the kind of information you want. Absolutely. Because what you want to build, you need to know, like, what do I give the customer at initial contact? What do I give the customer? You, you know what I mean? Right, exactly. Statement of work. And then when we're scoping and the customer's asking you how long is this going to take, these are the kinds of questions that we're going through when we're drafting the SOW. Right. So, like I said, the rule of thumb is 100 hosts per hour. Now, honestly, a scan is usually faster than that. Okay? This is a conservative number. So it allows me enough uh, leeway, you know what I mean? Right, enough leeway, right, sure. To, to kind of ballpark what we're talking about with the host. So if the customer tries to tell right. me that he's got five class C's, I usually try to get the customer to tell me how many endpoints we're dealing with. Right. right, right. Because you can have some class C's that are very saturated and some that aren't. So rather than deal with number of networks, I try to deal with number of endpoints. Right. And then the other thing that I really try to do with the customer is let them know that I'm okay if they're off by a few hundred. Right. Right. Because, right. You know, the guy's like, well, I mean, I would have to call, I would have to call configuration management. I'd have to call the VM team. I'd have to call. I mean, I don't know exactly how many hosts we have out there. And you kind of settle the customer down. Hey, don't worry about it. Just give me a ballpark. What are we dealing with? 3,000? 6,000? No, no, no. We're definitely probably like 45, 4,700 hosts. We're like, great. Okay. You see what I mean? Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. This gives this gives, this allows you to give him a ballpark yeah. figure of how much how long it's going to take and and the cost involved. And he, yes, he right. it like, there you like go. Estimate. Right. There you go. Right. Because you don't want to spend so much time, and then you don't want to turn it into where the guy needs to get off the phone and start calling around. You know what I mean? Right. You want him on. You want you want you. The hook is baited. You want to reel him in. Right. So let's get moving. Let's just put as few barriers to entry as possible. Okay, so now we've got a signed SOW. All right, so I've got this document. It's a launch plan. And this launch plan is actually from a live customer, okay? All right, so as we're looking through this, you see how like it's like project contacts, order summary, deployment timeline, and what are the next steps? So after you've got your signed SOW, you're going to want to do a kickoff meeting call. Okay. I try to do my kickoff meeting call about two weeks before I get on site. I'm just telling you the reason I like to do this because filling out this document might take us a while. So you see how I get all my POCs and all that? I like to get all that done way before I get on site. Sure. Right. I like to get all that under control, who's who, right? Then here, do you see how we've got the order summary? Right. Right. Are they buying products from us? Are they getting training from us? Right. Are they getting consulting? And if they're getting consulting, what are they getting? You, you see what I mean? Right. You have everything right here at your, at your fingertips. Right. Right. And, and I like to have this done, even though we've got a signed SOW, before we move on. You, you know what I mean? I like right. have I, I know, I know, I know exactly what you mean. I don't do it just like this with, with my clients. What I do is I have everything in one note. Uh huh. This be because what, what happens is if you jump in, you know, it's okay if you have one. What happens if you have 20? 
you know, <laughs> yeah. different clients. So you want to have have it organized. So if if everything comes up, you can go. Let me go right to the uh, the, the document and see exactly what it is. This way, you don't mix up clients or or information, which has happened in the past. Exactly, um, we're on the same boat now. What are you now noticing immediately from just our last fifteen minutes? You're actually creating an actual process. <laughs> You're seeing it, huh? I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of it, uh, at least, well, you know, on the government side, you don't always see all of that because that's handled by the uh, official government officials, but that paperwork trail should exist before, even if it's the thing that's in our room, I still have a paper trail regarding that before I can even touch it. That is correct. That is so correct. Okay. So here you see how we got like, what are the business goals? Right? So what's the business goal of this assessment? Is it to show regulatory compliance? You know, what is it? And then look here. Do you see this here? Look, what's the criteria for success? When you're in the right. consulting space, <clears throat> we need to have both parties know like, why are we doing this? How do we know if we did a good job? Did you kind of see what I mean? Right. You want to be having these discussions, right? So, you know, for example, what do we have to do? What are they worried about? Are there any roadblocks that we anticipate? You know, we want to have that. Even if it's only a paragraph, we want to have something, right? Then look at this information collection stuff. Okay, look at what we got here, right? You notice what I did with the customer is I highlight in red whatever technologies that they have. So we get to talking and the customer lets me know, oh yeah, we've got a few uh, 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 hosts where we're developing an ASP.NET or Java or CodeFusion and oh yeah, we've got Linux servers. And you notice I'm not asking like how many they have and what it is and where it is. Right. Right. But I before we get rolling, you notice like we got to we got to know what's out there, you, you know. Right. The reason I don't ask for what it is and where it is right now, because we're two weeks away from getting on site. You, you kind of see what I mean? Right. So You're just trying, trying to get a feel for it. Yeah. We're just trying to get a feel because what ends up happening is, again, we don't want the guy to run off and be like, well, let me contact you. You know what I mean? Right. You want you want to keep them, keep the uh, inflammation flowing. Yeah. Right. So we get the that information. And now here you see how we get the network stuff. Oh, he's got Cisco. Oh, he's got Juniper or Palo Alto, oh. you, you know. Right. Oh, he's got a blue code. He's got a this. He's got a that. Right. So we try to get them. And you really want to kind of see if you can make it a yeah, we have that. No, we don't. How many it is, where it is. I don't want you to really worry about that in these portions, you, you, you know? Right. You're just trying to get the customer to kind of kind of get this open dialogue because I'm still two weeks from being on site, okay? At the end of this document, then I'm going to ask the customer to put me in touch with, oh, uh, vulnerability management team or... The, the network team. Do, do, do you see why I'm saying it that way? Right, right. I, I've got two weeks that I can work with those groups before I get on site to be trying to get more accurate information. Right, right. Okay. So you see how we're doing the same thing with the desktops, right? Right. There's the desktop stuff, you know. Now, what are you noticing? Okay. What are you noticing? The IP range should be there on some form of documentation. That's right. Sorry. And now, what are you noticing that we have broken out here? More IP addresses for those particular dates and where you're supposed to go. Right. So, because, you know, we've got to really move, right? So, in the commercial sector, the customer is really trying to move. So if you notice this network, these are big, right? These are really big networks. So what we do is in this case, this is so many subnets that what I ask the customer to do 
was actually let me have access to their vulnerability scan data. Okay, now this is something I really think you should think about, right? Because you might be in a situation where specifically in your case, it might be a customer you've already done scans for before. Right. Right. You can just save that IP for the next time if they keep the same stuff. Absolutely. You can save that IP for the next time. But the other thing that you can do is you can save time. If you look at this many subnets and we ballpark that, let's call it two hours per subnet, look at all those subnets. So it's a lot easier to tell the customer, look, sir, I'll do whatever you want to make you happy. It might be a better use of my time to just spot check your vulnerability scan data, vice me, burn 14 hours a day scanning. You can be using me here as a resource to be doing testing, to be talking to your admins while I'm here doing stuff, vice just running the same scans that you're already running. Okay? Right. So this is a client relationship thing. You know, you're going to find a lot of clients who are going to be like, you know what? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Right. Right. I agree. I think it's a good idea. Why waste time, you know, having a highly paid guy here to sit here and do stuff that my low level admins are already doing? Doing right. So, you know, you, you, you establish good rapport with the client. Let the client know, listen, I'll do whatever you want, sir. I just think you may want to consider having me spot check your scan results and do some scanning on specific subnets looking for specific things by just full bore vulnerability scanning. Now the customer may say, well, look, you know, uh, for our audit, we have to have this, you know, Hey, no problem. You, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. No problem. You know, I'll do whatever you want, but I really try to build that rapport if I can. Okay. Now, uh, you see here, we're going to perform very light testing on subnets to verify that they cannot be reached from other, ex other subnets. Do you notice down here, the customer gave us zones? Right. Right. This is what's in this zone. This is what's in this zone. This is what's in this zone. The reason is because um, we had to schedule maintenance windows. You know, if you're going to be scanning you know, the conference rooms and stuff like that. Oh, trust me, buddy, you're not scanning the conference rooms when the executives are in there. You, you know what right. I mean? Right, right, you're right. You're not doing that kind of stuff. So, or, the, or the voice over IP during work hours. Exactly. That's such a good point. Such a good point, right? So now you see down here, well, like, hey, here's where we'll perform Right. And now do you see here like, hey, we'll wait until daytime to scan these. See that? Right. OK, they got some stuff we can only scan at night, some stuff we can only scan during the day, some stuff that we got to get customer permission from, you know, all that kind of stuff. OK. And then here you see like here's the next steps. So I'm giving you this because I really wanted you to have. Uh, the documents that I use, you, you, you know what I mean? I think this is great. I, I, do, I do. You know, you know it, what happens is it, it, it formalizes, you know, uh, the, the process of putting things down in certain timelines that you, uh, that you use and, uh, you know, you give us some tips on how to put the customer at ease. And actually, so, you know, a lot of those same tips are, what, what I see too, you want to you want to get the customer once you got them on the phone. You don't want to get them off until you got everything you can, you know. And you don't you want to do it as quickly as possible. Right, you hit it dead on. Right, okay.